Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture from the Daily Mass. Today is Saturday of the 20th week in ordinary time, but it's also a memorial. It is the memorial of the Queenship of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Uh, this is uh, a memorial that takes place eight days, an octave after the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the solemnity that we celebrated uh, eight days ago. And today we remember that as she was uh, assumed into heaven, that she also was given a special place of queenship. And this really is the queen mother, the, the mother of the king. To the Hebrew people, this was a special word. It was the word gebirah. And uh, it was a place of special prominence. I remember uh, many years ago when I took a pilgrimage of young adults uh, to uh, Italy, and we were in Rome and staying in the area of Trastevere, that we came across the uh, Basilica uh, in uh, Trastevere. It's uh, located in the piazza of that little area of Rome. And uh, we were able to celebrate Mass uh, in that basilica. And then afterward, the sacristan couldn't speak much English. Uh, and I didn't, of course, speak much Italian. So we were having a little bit of trouble. But he motioned to us to come out into uh, the main church and there to look up at the mosaic that was behind the altar. And uh, he, he said to us, only one in the world. And we look up, and this beautiful mosaic has two people seated upon thrones. You have Jesus seated upon his throne as the King of kings and Lord of lords. And next to him, just to the right, in a smaller throne, was his mother, and he had his arm around her. It was an absolutely beautiful thing to see how he had his arm around his mother. And it was a signature, again, reminding us that her special place in heaven as the mother of God is to be the queen mother of heaven. And that it might be an opportunity for us to remember even more powerfully who she was in salvation history. So I'd encourage you today uh, to read up a little bit more on this beautiful memorial and all that it means to us uh, in the church today. Well, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowds and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and Pharisees have taken their seat on the chair of Moses, Therefore, do and observe all things whatsoever they tell you, but do not follow their example, for they preach, but they do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to carry, and lay them on people's shoulders, but they will not lift a finger to move them. All their works are performed to be seen. They widen their phylacteries and lengthen their tassels. They love places of honor at banquets, seats of honor in the synagogues, greetings in the marketplaces, and the salutation, Rabbi. As for you, do not be called Rabbi. You have but one teacher, and you are all brothers. Call no one on earth your father. You have but one father in heaven. Do not be called Master. You have but one Master, the Messiah. The greatest among you must be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A very powerful passage of Scripture, and one that we hear often when we hear those, especially some from the Protestant world, that make the argument that, that priests in the Catholic Church, and actually there are some in uh, Anglicanism and other groups that do the same thing, and where the priest is called father. And they said, well, clearly here uh, in this passage, it says, call no one on earth your father. Uh, and we'll get to that. There's, there's some interesting nuances to that. Obviously, if that was uh, something forbidden by Jesus, then we shouldn't even call any of our earthly fathers, our biological fathers, should not be called father either 
if we were to follow that text, but that's not what Jesus meant here. But anyway, he's talking to the crowds, and the crowds, of course, are, are interested. They're, they are not yet following him, but interested in what he says. And they obviously are Jewish people who are under the authority of the scribes and the Pharisees. And uh, so he, he takes this time to challenge some of the tenets of their authority. Part of it being not that they necessarily are teaching things that are improper. There are places where he talks about that. But here what he's talking about is they, they put heavy burdens on people, but they're not willing uh, to lift a finger to move those burdens. In other words, uh, they put it on everybody else, and they themselves have a very light load when they, if they really wanted to, didn't have to put that burden on other people. And they talk about the fact that their works are performed to be seen. They widen their phylacteries and lengthen their tassels. You may remember the other day when we talked about the greatest commandment that you're to wear, uh, you know, uh, to put these practices of God uh, on the forehead and on the forearm, on the hand. And I said that they were done in phylacteries, a little tiny leather pouches that contained the Hebrew Shema written on parchment. But here, what he's talking about is that they widen their phylacteries. In other words, they make them big. They, they want to make sure that, you are, that those things uh, call their attention to the holiness of these men, these, these leaders. And so they make big phylacteries, big leather pouches, and they lengthen their tassels. That's the, the, the tilits on the edge of the uh, prayer shawls that they wore, and uh, the seat seats, they're called. And um, the seat seats, if they, they made them nice and long. So again, they had all of the outward appearances of being people of, of deep holiness and deep faith. But that's about as deep as their holiness goes is uh, what they wore on their bodies. And so he was really challenging them at the point of their commitment. And uh, talks about the fact they love the honor that goes with their position. They love their places of honor at banquets and in the synagogues. And uh, they loved being called by titles. And this is where we get in to the three titles that Jesus talks about. You see, he mentions first that the scribes and Pharisees have taken their seat on the chair of Moses. In other words, they are placing themselves as the replacement to Moses. Moses was a father, just like there was Father Abraham there was basically Father Moses who led the children of Israel. And they are taking his place. They assumed his authority. They assumed his place of leadership. They assumed all that belonged to Moses and basically claimed that for themselves. And so he's basically challenging the titles that they themselves are talking about. It's not talking about how we use those words today, it's how the Pharisees and the scribes used those words back then. Number one, they are called rabbi, or, and that means teacher. And uh, it says, do not be called teacher. You have but one teacher, and you are all brothers. In other words, don't lay claim the same way that these scribes are, and just point to the one who is the true teacher. It doesn't matter what you're called point to the teacher with the big T, the capital T. The same with father. Call no one on earth your father. Again, it's a, it's a statement of hyperbole that he's wanting to make sure they understand that they shouldn't be considered father in the sense of having that supreme authority, but rather call the one, point to the one who is your father in heaven. You have one father in heaven. And do not be called master, which, again, are Lord. And here we see, again, Jesus saying, look, don't try to put yourself in places of authority, but point to the one who is supreme authority, the Messiah. So, again, the greatest among you must be your servant. And, and so the whole issue of leadership in the kingdom of heaven and as it is expressed in the church on earth, should not be one based on titles that, uh, that are demanded, 
but based on who it is that we serve. We serve the greatest who is God, and we are his servants. When we use the word father for our biological father, we're talking about a term of endearment and relationship. The same is true of uh, the fathers in the church, uh, the priests called father because we as children have a pastoral father, have someone that cares for us. And, and so that's the, the, the terminology and the setting in which it's placed. So again, whoever exalts himself, as the scripture says, will be humbled and who humbles himself will be exalted. And this is the teaching of Jesus. So here we have an understanding of, of this passage and all that our Lord wants us to get from it. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, again, on this uh, blessed memorial of the Queenship of the Blessed Virgin Mary, may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.